Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, nails of your life and become your most radiant version in the process. This podcast is all about exploring deep beauty and how we can make an impact in the world by being our most radiant versions for ourselves, our loved ones, our families, and our communities. We have joining with us today, AJ Gupta. We recently had a chance to connect at an event and I loved AJ's radiance. So when I come across fellow radiant humans, I want to know what they do behind the scenes. So this show is going to inspire you to be a leader by stepping into positive emotional states and being our most radiant versions. Let me tell you a little bit about today's bright and shining guest, AJ Gupta. He was born in London, England, raised by two of the most loving, selfless people, Anil and Meena Gupta. AJ and his beautiful sister, Anu, spent their childhood surrounded by a huge family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and of course, cousins, who were more like siblings. Thanks to this constant immersion with family, they learned at an early age to love and give unconditionally. The direction of AJ's life changed when more than 20 years ago, he was introduced to landmark education, Unleash the Power Within, with Tony Robbins and other personal development events. Using the tools and strategies they learned at these events, the Guptas held monthly family forums where they practiced what they learned. This early exposure, coupled with heart-centered parenting, practiced by Anil and Mina, his parents, sparked a lifelong journey of self-development and awakened a feeling that he was to lead a life of serving others. Powerful, dynamic, inspirational speaker and corporate trainer, AJ has the unique ability to help people discover where they are mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and financially, and then pinpoint what's preventing them from taking action. AJ helps people clarify their direction and guides them to reach it more quickly and with joy and fun. At only 22 years old, AJ was invited to attend as a guest as a guest to the Global Leadership Forum held in Delhi, India. This exceptional honor continued his exposure to some of the most influential world leaders. In keeping up with his philosophy of giving unconditionally, AJ serves on the board of nonprofit organizations around the world, each dedicated to serving those who need it most. Welcome, 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 AJ Gupta to the show. How are you today? Thank you so Hi. much. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. What a beautiful introduction. It's like I wrote that one myself. <laughs> well, I, I think you very well may have. That is your introduction. Yeah, yeah I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you, Rachel. Mm-hmm. That attitude of gratitude, you know, vitamin G. A lot of my, mm-hmm. my one of my friends, Ben Azadi, likes to say that all the time. And giving is such a key part of being radiant. But first, we need to fill our cup up first. We're going to talk about ways to do that. But first of all, let's kick things off, AJ, with the unlimited dollar question. What is radiance to you? Beautiful question. So the first thing that comes to me when I think of radiance is light, right? Um, if you think of, you know, when anybody talks about radiance, it's, it's you know, a radiant of light or an, an, an emission of light. And I truly believe every human being living on this planet Earth has a beautiful light inside them. We're all born with a beautiful light. We're born with this inner radiance. And, you know, you, you notice, you know, have you ever, you know, walked down a street or you see someone and you just, they're just smiling and they're glowing and you say to yourself, you know, that's, that's what radiance is. And where does that come from? You know, it comes from the inside, but when we see it from the outside, it's when we are happy, when we are in a state of joy, when we're in a state of flow, when we're in a state of love, that's what radiance is to me. It's just light coming from the inside and, and literally shining out 
in all areas of, of what we do through our face, our hands, our body, everything. So if, to me, radiance is just pure light. Yes, well said. And also, did you know that the face and the hands are the highest emitters of light on our bodies. And we can actually detect this using certain forms of photography to actually quantify that kind of statement, which is incredible. So when we're putting our best face forward, we're actually doing more than just putting on skincare and makeup and putting a smile on. This whole electromagnetic projection of, according to Ayurveda, is the electromagnetic projection of your 10 bodies. Radiance is considered the 10th body. So I love to connect with a gentleman like yourself who is from India who can expand a little bit more on that. And it just warms my heart when I'm also walking the street and I see someone giving me a nice, big, bright smile back at me as opposed to looking at the ground on their phones. And you know, if you think about it, a few decades ago, we used to do a lot more of that. And I wonder what shift. You, worked with, you work with so many people leaders in various faculties, what is it that really makes someone radiant in their day-to-day -day life? Say, for example, even something as simple as what their routines look like. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> I think what what really makes someone pure radiance, where they're just admitting this beautiful, unconditional light, is when they have, or, you know, we call them states of being. Right. Sometimes we can all be frustrated at times. We could be upset. We could be sad. We could be stressed. You know, anxiety is a big one these days. You know, a lot of people say that they're anxious or they have a lot of anxiety. And it comes down to the things that we're thinking in our head. You know, if we're always in a state of worry or state of lack or a state of lack of abundance, you know, it, it creates a lot of darkness inside. And so, you know, how can we be radiant? But one of the quickest ways, in my opinion, to be radiant, to be that love, to be that light, is to one, focus on what we have. You know, we live in a world now where, you know, especially in the last 10, 15 years, the, the focus has shifted from, from family and connection and building and creating for generational to now what is, what's in it for me? What can I get right now? And that, that shift of focus from we to I has really changed the way we feel on the inside. You know, it, like, I, I, I love it when, you know, I see people helping other people. Like, I believe every, like, we light up inside every human being when we help other people. We see other people help other people. And why is that? It's because there's beauty in giving. There's beauty in that gift. And, and it does light us up. So one of the quickest ways to, to feel that radiance from the inside is to really, one, focus on what you have, but two is to give, right? And it doesn't have to be money to give. It could be, you know, the most important thing in life, aside from money, the most important thing in life is time, right? And we all have 24 hours in a day. And so when you are in that moment, when in the moments you are giving or the moments you are loving or being loved, that's when we feel the, the, the best. That's when we are filled with joy. And that's where the radiance comes out from, you know? Absolutely. I love your concept of growing 1% a day. Now, when clients come to connect with me, they want to learn about a skincare routine and different things they can do to be healthier. And if we're going to explain a little bit further on that, how can we reduce oxidative stress in our environment? But we forget about the mind. We forget about the energy. We forget about our spirituality and our connection with ourself and being in these positive emotional states. What would be your recommendation for growing 1% a day? Because we can get overwhelmed with making huge life shifts. And how can we just take you know, a step each day to grow 1% and be 1% better every day? Yeah, absolutely. It's a beautiful question. Um, so over the last 22 years, I've been in personal development since I was nine years old. Um, so almost 23 years old now, I'm 32. And I've had the privilege and honor of spending time with some of the most quote-unquote influential people in the world. You know, people like Tony Robbins, people like Sir Richard Branson, 
people like his holiness the dalai lama who is you know arguably one of the most spiritual beautiful loving men on the planet and presidents and ex-presidents and billionaires right and I've noticed that it doesn't matter who these people are, fear always shows up, they get upset, that something always happens, life always happens. But one thing that remains constant in all of these people and everything that we do is ourselves. You know, we take us everywhere. In 20 years from now, I'm the only person that's going to be with me, my mind, my body, my soul. Right? In five years from now, in 50 years from now, it's just going to be me. So I was like, what can we do? right what can we do and and i'm a big believer in growing one percent every single day now some people may want to grow three percent some people may need to grow ten percent but what if we just focused on just growing one percent every single day and when we compound that growth beautiful things happen but not just one percent you know financially you know when people say oh i want to you know one percent compounded a lot of people think about money but what they don't think of is what if you compounded your happiness by 1%? What if you compounded your love by 1% every single day? What if you compounded your gratitude and appreciation every single day? Where would you be in six months from now? How would you feel in six months, months from now? So I'm a big believer in, in growing 1% and, and there are four areas. One must grow at least 1%. And when you do these things every single day, it will allow you to grow significantly in that final piece, which is what I believe everybody is after is that finances, right? We, we live in a world where that's what most people care about is money, 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 but they forget about the most important thing is themselves, right? So the four areas, one is that we must grow at least 1% mentally, right? And what does this look like? It looks like, like coming to this podcast right now, for those that are listening, this is part of your 1% growth right? Because you will learn something from here. You can implement it and use it somewhere else. You can read a book. You can talk to people who are smarter than you. Every single day, imagine if you focus 10, 15 minutes on learning something new and not only learning it, but applying it in your life, imagine where you would be, right? So that's 1% mental growth. The other is 1% emotional growth. We are all emotional beings. This is like, you know, we're filled with love. We, we love other people. And so 1% emotional growth could be, you know, maybe you need to call someone that you haven't spoken to in a while, or maybe you need to connect with someone, or maybe you need to, you know, um, one of the most beautiful emotional uh, exercises to do is to write down five or 10, 15 things that you're grateful for. Because when we focus on the things that we have and when we focus on appreciation and gratitude, it changes the way we feel on the inside, right? So 1% growth emotionally. Then we have spiritual growth, right? And this could be different for everyone, but it's like, what are you doing every single day that allows you to grow spiritually? You know, build that connection with the high universe or God or, you know, whoever it is for you. Right. And it could be praying. It could be doing meditation. It could be, you know, any anything that works for you that allows you to grow spiritually. And then the last one, I believe, is just as important as the others is you have to grow one percent physically. Right. And this is moving your body. Motion creates emotion. Right. Especially nowadays, I work with so many people and, and they don't move their bodies anymore. They don't go out. They don't. And and, and when they do move, they're like, oh, I feel so much better. But we forget, right? So, you know, your body is your is your vehicle to get what you want. And when you have a strong vehicle, when that when that body's strong and you're doing something every single day to and it's not just muscles. A lot of people think, oh, I just have to go to the gym, but that's not physical growth, right? It it could be yoga, it could be walking, it could be running, it could be exercising, anything that allows you to to grow physically. And when you do these things every single day with pure intention, right? Not because, okay, I'm just going to grow 1% every single day. So then I finally get that, that pay rise that I expected next year, or I'm going to grow 1% physically so I can finally lose these 30 pounds I've been trying to lose for the last 10 years. But like, let's focus on the future, right? We all have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ahead of us. You know, with technology nowadays, we can live up to a hundred years old. So focus instead of focusing on the next two weeks or the next two months let's focus on your whole life right and and let's and create a routine every single day for you first that allows you to grow one percent in all these areas and when you do 
everything around you changes. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. To speak to forgiveness, spirituality, physicality, and thinking about the future, these are really deep topics. So some of the ways that I like to approach this is to do things that I can throughout the day, all day, every day, to be as pure as possible. That comes down to drinking purified water, eating foods that are good for me, listening to things that are positive and uplifting. I don't, you know, listen to scary music or even a lot of modern music I don't even listen to or movies that are going to put me in a negative emotional state. I'm really particular about that. So it's almost like you have to clear out the cobwebs and oxidative stressors, right, from a health position to actually have your brain and operating system to be able to function with improving 1% every day, right? It's like trying to improve your sleep, but you're sleeping in a moldy environment, a lot of EMFs. You're not going to be able to improve your sleep. So really focusing on those foundations. I'm really happy that you brought up forgiveness. And a lot of people, when they're dealing with skin stuff, right? And they're dealing with emotional things as well. The face tells us so much about what is going on inside someone, in particular with emotions and lived experiences. There's a whole face study area, which I'm just really, um, I find it really incredible to say. So forgive others, forgive yourself, right? Very important to do that. And across the board, those who I connect with who are radiant, they all have a spiritual practice. They all have a meditation practice. They're always doing some type of prayer practice throughout the day. And then the physicality aspect. Yes, you got to move that body. You have one body. It's your job to take excellent care of it. And then you also mentioned looking towards the future. Now, AJ, have you ever come across people that they just vent about, you know, the ex did this or this person did that? You know what it's like to connect with those people? They're just kind of trapped in that rear view mirror type of mindset. How do you recommend people shift from that rear view mirror mindset to be able to think more expansively about creating and designing their future? Yeah, absolutely. That's a beautiful question. Um, one thing we have to, the first step is to become aware right? We have to become aware that we are actually just looking in the rear view mirror. Some, some of us aren't even aware we're doing that, right? I just literally got off a coaching call with someone and, and I asked him about his life and, and the way he was portraying his life. He told me all the negative things that were happening in his life. And, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing, but that's just the way he's been conditioned. That's the way you've trained yourself. And so by asking different questions, you will get a different result. So I asked him, what are some of the most successful things you've done? And again, in his brain, he's like, I haven't done anything successful. So then we have to change the question, right? What are some good things that you've done? Or what are some positive things that you've done? And he started to list these things out and you could tell, you can see a, a difference in, in the way he shows up, his energy levels. And I said, just look at that. You look at your energy level right now because you're now focused on all the beautiful things that you've done. Right. So we have to be aware. Okay. Yeah. There is a rear view mirror, right? We all have rear view mirrors. And when we look at the rear view mirror and we focus on all the things that we could have done and we didn't do and we should have done, it's going to lead us down a really negative cycle. And most of us, like, imagine you're driving from Orlando to New York and you're only looking in the rear view mirror. Are you ever going to get anywhere? No, you're going to, you're going to crash. You're going to burn you. Something's going to happen. But every now and then you have to look back just to make sure that there are no fast cars, make sure everything's safe back there. Just in case that you need to make an emergency shift in turn, you, you're aware that what cars are behind you. So become aware of what you're looking at and what you're focusing at, and then ask yourself different questions, right? Remember the past, your past doesn't equal your future unless you consistently and constantly choose every single day. Right. So we all have done so many beautiful, successful things. Right. If you write a list of 50 or 100 things that you've done. And you really lean into them and some of them could be so simple. 
right? It could be like you woke up today, right? Or you graduated high school or you graduated college or you got this job or you, this and so on and so forth. And we forget sometimes because, you know, we, we're our biggest self-critics, right? But if someone else looks at our life and really looks at all the things that we've done on paper, they're going to think we're the most successful people on the planet, right? So it's like identifying, okay, the past is the past, but what are your strengths? What, what have you done great? What are some of the beautiful things that you've done? And how can you use that to creating a beautiful future for yourself? Mm, beautifully said. I talk about not looking in the rear view mirror for the rest of your life in my audible radiance, the new skin science. And I just, I see this so much with ladies who I've connected with. They're constantly, you know, think about this and that in the past. It, it's all about also being in the present moment and really enjoying being in the present moment, especially with the beautiful fellow radiant humans that you're with and you never know that radiant person if you if you put your head up and not looking in your phone might be right in front of you so when it comes to being in these positive emotional states being our most radiant versions all with you know that goal to be of service and being gratitude in the process what does it look like to lead by example in your opinion in a way that supports both ourselves our family and our business life and what can we do to be that guide to live by example? Yeah, absolutely beautiful question. And, um, you know, gratitude is, you know, in the beginning, like you said, gratitude is the only attitude. And when we can really truly be grateful for one, who we are and what we've done, right? None of us were given a manual for life. Every single day, we are writing a new chapter. We are writing a new page. We are writing a new, um, a new section based on the experiences that we have. So when we can find gratitude in us and what we've done and appreciation in that, it will give us more self-love. It will make us feel better about ourselves. And when we start to feel better about ourselves and when we love ourselves more, the abil our ability to love and give love to others exponentially increases. It's crazy, right? But we have to give that love and appreciation to ourselves first. I think that's so important. And when we do that, it allows other people to notice that as well, which will then allow them to start appreciating themselves as well. So, you know, I remember growing up, um, you know, this lead by example thing is so important. And we, we as human beings, we model the people around us. And, you know, for the longest time, I was telling a lot of people around me to, to, to change their health, right? Change your health, change your health, change your health. And I realized that after telling them for so long, they really didn't do it until I led by example. And I started to change my health. I started to show up with, you know, my celery juices and my green juices every day. I, uh, practice gratitude and appreciation. I became this human being, this person that I wanted all these other people to be. And by me doing it, they saw it. And then they started to naturally do it. Right. So I love to lead by example because we have to lead by example. It, it does start with us first. And when we do, the people that we love, the people around us will follow naturally. Those kiddos are always watching, right? So if you're listening and you're a parent, being in these positive emotional states and making good decisions is really going to set up the next generation as well. But first, you have to help yourself and taking those steps to be a little bit better, to be a little bit brighter, to be a little bit more radiant every day will help get you there. I'm curious, you've connected with a number of leaders and things like that and you know, different business CEOs and just people in general, right? It doesn't matter what someone's background is. What matters is if they're a good person and their heart is in the right place. But I'm curious, in the most successful people that you've worked with that truly are radiant, how do they stay in a positive emotional state even when life or the universe throws them a bit of a curveball and an obstacle? What are some tips for staying in a more positive emotional state? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, 
a beautiful question again. One thing I've realized and noticed is, you know, life is always going to show up. Life is always going to throw curveballs at you, right? Things are always going to happen, but it doesn't matter. It's not what happens in life is what you do about it. Right. And again, it's that focus. Some of the most successful people on the planet, it's their focus is what gets them the results. They can focus on all the problems. They can focus on all the things that aren't happening the way they can focus on all the people that are cheating them. And if they're focusing on all those things, it's not going to get them the results, but it's like looking at whatever's happening and just seeing them as they are. And then asking yourself, okay, what can I do about this now? What solutions can I create for myself? Who do I need to be or who do I need to create or who do I need to speak to that will allow me to get to where I want to get to? You know, it's like not taking no for an answer, not settling. You know, a lot of people just settle. They just say, oh, it is the way it is, or I can't do it, or it's impossible. But I believe there's always a way. There's always a way. But when we come from that place of, see, the the from a place of, um, like learning and growing and with the impact and solution in mind from a heart centered place typically gets the results much, much faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Solutions, always finding a solution, right? I don't like to use the word roadblock. I'd rather look at something that pops up. I mean, stress is a sign of being alive, right? You have a pulse, things are happening to you in life. Um, But the, the, Interesting thing is here, when you're operating in a more radiant frequency, you tend to attract the right people in the right way at the right time. This is actually the deeper layer to the why of desiring to become more beautiful and have clear skin and fuller hair and, you know, that fit body and being able to speak in clear, coherent sentences because you've overcome brain fog The deep-rooted why behind seeking to be more beautiful is to form community. And community comes from having confidence, right? And community is a deep survival need. So when we need some solutions that maybe we're either not creative enough to have come up with or we need some mentorship and guidance, having the community when you need help, whether, you know, I was in two car crashes, I had my healer community, already established so that when something happened, they knew my baseline, they could take care of me, but other things, right? So I think it's a good idea to have in your network, a couple of different types of mentors. So I'm curious, AJ, what types of mentors do you have or that you have potentially accumulated in your own hero's journey? What, what are they like? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and, you know, it's, I, I learned this at a very young age when I was 14 years old was you are who you spend time with and who you spend time with is who you become. Right. So having mentors that, you know, it's always great to have three or four people that you can trust. Right. People who are operating in this beautiful state in their lives. Right. Because, you know, you want to model them. You want to trust what they say and what they do. So it's, it's important to have those people in your life and, and don't be afraid to really ask them. You know, there was a, there, I remember three years ago, I was going through a really difficult time and, and I thought I could handle everything myself. You know, I thought I was smart enough, strong enough, capable enough to handle everything, even though I had those mentors around me, but fear stopped me from even reaching out to them. Right? Because I didn't want them to think that I couldn't handle it. And if they thought I couldn't handle it, then I'm a failure and so on and so forth. And I called one of them up and I had a question and I had an issue. I had a massive problem at the time. And within 35 seconds, my issue was gone. Right? The feeling I got from my issue disappeared. And it was really just that trust in them and them telling me, they told me exactly what I needed to hear. And so it's important to find people in your life that you trust, that are on the right path, that when you speak to them and you connect with them, one, you feel like you can be yourself when you're around those people. That's important. Two is that you you know and, and trust that you can have an open, honest conversation with them, and they will be able to tell you openly and honestly what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. That's important. And, and three is, um, 
yeah, just trusting that, trusting that you have those people really using them and listening to them. You don't have to always do everything they say, but listen to them. And then you can use what they're saying and use your knowledge, intermingle it, and then create results for yourself. So yeah, having mentors and people around you uh, that have been through what you've been through is really important because it'll save you time. It'll save you energy it'll save you money or save you so much. Mm -hmm. And also prayer comes in here too. This is why I think that radiant people have a spiritual practice, a meditation practice, a prayer practice, because they believe in a higher power that can help them out and they need that help as well. This is a very key thing that I've seen in thousands of clients that I've worked with, studying them. What makes them happy? Why do some people receive better rejuvenation outcomes than others? And it's because they're happier inside and they're doing the work to lead by example, which is fantastic. AJ, I'm curious if anything has come up for you based on your background, your insights, working with so many people as a leader yourself to inspire those who are tuning in to be their most radiant versions. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Do you have any closing words to inspire listeners to continue to be their most radiant, beautiful versions? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, one, firstly, thank you every single one of you for listening. And, and it's, you know, don't beat yourself up. You know, I used to beat myself up a lot. I still do at times, but now I don't do it as often. And when I do, I do it in a playful way. But, you know, we are some of our biggest critics and and when we beat ourselves up over and over again it doesn't serve us and it doesn't help us so understand that we're all on a journey each of us are on our journey and and my journey is completely different than rachel's and rachel's is completely different than yours and and sometimes we feel like our journey should be someone else's or we should be sharing their journey but we each have our own journey and your journey can and does influence and change so many people's lives so it's really sticking in your lane you know, doing what you'd love to do and finding tools and technologies and things and routines that work specifically for you. Because what may work for me may not work for someone else, right? For me, if I want to get a bunch of energy, I can go for a five, five six mile run, even though I don't, I don't like running, but that's for me. But my sister can't run more than point five. So, so my tools to get me where I need to be are completely different from someone else's. So it's really inviting every single one of you to 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 be like Sherlock Holmes of your own life right and really dissect all these different areas of your life and ask yourself how can I show up more with love how can I grow in all these areas and and enjoy the journey and process along the way beautiful all right AJ where can people find you where can they learn more about you I know you have a show the one percent growth club Share with everybody how they connect connect with you and tune into your show. Absolutely. Well, I would love for every single one of you to connect and, and join me on this beautiful journey. Every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I show up live on TikTok at 9 a.m. for 30 minutes. It's called the 1% Growth Club. And my, my uh, co-host and I, we share different tools and technologies every single day through stories on how each of you can grow 1%. Um, we've also put my website here as well, uh, ajguptinspires.com. But really, like, I would love for you guys to join the conversations, join the community, join uh, this journey and, and see the difference it makes for you. Lovely. Well, it was a pleasure to have you here on the show. We ended the recording at 33 minutes and 33 seconds, of course. And <laughs> yes, thank you for your time. And I know you do just a ton of nonprofit work. You do a lot of work with kids also, which is incredible. And I, I, I think with you, because of your upbringing with your parents and lots of love from family, it really allowed you to become the beautiful radiant man that you are today. So shout out to you, your beautiful family. <laughs> Thank you. you did a fantastic job with you. I love coming across radiant men and just, I'm always curious of what, cultivated radiance in you. And I love to study it. So thank you everyone for tuning in to today's show on the school of radiance podcast. Learn more about the many beautiful ways that I can support you on your skincare and your radiance transformation journey over at the school of radiance.com.
Have a beautiful high vibe reading day, everybody. Bye-bye.